Hey, what's up guys? Alan with Sonic Electronics Q&A, and I don't know where Brendan's at. He's doing something. I don't really know if he's doing anything, but anyway, uh, he's twisting wires. Oh, he's lighting them on fire now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got this little thing rigged up here for a question, so I uh, hope you guys appreciate it. We do take a little bit of time occasionally to set up some rigs if we can to really help answer questions. Uh, a visual always is very helpful in certain, uh, you know, certain times when you need something to show you guys something. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, the first question that we have here, I have my backup wire from my stereo connected with the power wire from the camera to the power on the reverse light and the camera stays on immediately. I don't even have the ground from the camera hooked up. Can you tell me what's going on? It's installed in a 03 Lincoln. So the Planet Audio 7 inch, doesn't know the model number. Uh, but anyway, so, and that question was from YouTube. <clears throat> so anyway, we have this parent asteroid smart radio here. And uh, I've got a Boyo VTB16B backup camera. It's just basically a universal keyhole backup camera just to basically show you what might be going on um, and give a better explanation as to like how I typically hook up a backup camera. And of course it all kind of depends on the application. But anyway, I have our power source and um, I've got an extra wire over here that I'm using to simulate uh, like the reverse wire or if you've got your camera hooked up to accessory, whatever the case may be. And um, so I'll go ahead and plug in the camera to our backup camera input that's coming off the back of the radio there. And um, I think we're, we're, we're on camera input manually, even though it's kind of weird looking. But anyway. So I've got power here. There's power to the camera, ground to the camera, and I'm gonna hook up just power only to the camera. And as you can see, the camera is turning on without me hooking up the ground. And I can tell you why. This ground is common with the shield of the video wire. So if we take our multimeter here, put that on the shield of the video and we take our ground wire right here. We hear the multimeter and it's on continuity and it's beeping. So basically what's happening is the, the camera is actually getting ground through the RCA because the RCA is plugged into the chassis ground of the radio. So that's why. However, you of course you still want to hook up the ground because when the vehicle is running and all that, if it actually doesn't have a good ground, you'll see that your camera will be really grainy and liney and not the picture won't be very good because it doesn't have a really good ground. It's pulling some ground through the RCA. So that's why the camera is still turning on. As to why your um, video is turning on instantly, um, I can't say from personal experience from your particular radio, however, on certain aftermarket radios like a Pioneer, in the menu and settings when you go into backup camera, there is a polarity selector for positive or negative for the trigger uh, for the backup camera source. So um, it is possible that it may be on negative and when you're not in reverse, uh, your reverse light still may be resting at ground depending on the car. Uh, that's possible. Obviously without having the vehicle here, I can't say for certain. Um, but uh, as you can see, that's why it's important to ground. Just in another, uh, as another example, when hooking up an amplifier in your car, it's always good before you connect the power uh, to the amplifier to make sure you have a very secure and properly grounded amplifier. Because if you don't either have a ground because you're like, oh, I'll hook that up last, or you don't have a very good ground, once you connect power to the amplifier or put that fuse in, the amplifier will try to pull ground through the RCA cables from the head unit. And sometimes that will result in damaging 
the actual radio itself. Like that can happen to a Pioneer as an example, where it'll actually destroy the Pico fuse inside and now you've got a ton of engine noise. And some of you guys watching this are going, oh, that's what happened to my radio. Anyway, um, what else was I gonna talk about besides this? Now, the way that I typically recommend hooking it up, and I'm gonna explain why. So, in the owner, owner's manual, most backup cameras, they tell you to hook up the camera to the actual reverse light itself. The downside of that is that you have an aftermarket radio like this guy here, where you can actually turn on the backup camera input while you're driving, if you just connect power to the camera to reverse, if you were to go ahead and hit that button like I just did, we'd get a blank image. We wouldn't be able to see anything because when the camera's connected to the reverse wire, the reverse trigger for power, it only gets power when it's in reverse. So what I do instead of doing that, and that's obviously up to you, but I connect the backup camera up to the power of the radio through, a sw through the switch source so that way when I turn the key on and the radio turns on, the camera has power at all times. So the only wire that I've got connected to the reverse wire is the uh, radio for the reverse trigger input. So only when I put the vehicle in reverse does it actually just trigger that source for that time being. But then when I put it in drive, I can actually go right into the backup camera source and actually manually turn that on and actually see behind me. So. That's what I usually recommend. That's usually uh, what I do uh, that I prefer myself. So not all radios have that feature. So you don't necessarily have to hook it up the way I, you know, way I recommended it or the way I prefer. I just do that out of habit because a lot of newer radios nowadays have that option. So, you know, I don't want to hook it up and then a camera, uh, you know, customer come and they go, hey, what does this button do? And it, you know, it's like, hey, I should have hooked it up that way. So that way they could have used it. So. That's why I kind of out of habit, always make sure I hook up the camera to accessory power and just hook up the reverse trigger to the actual unit itself to switch into the camera source. So just make sure all your connections are good just to troubleshoot to see what your issue is going on. Hopefully that helped you uh, with solving your problem. And if it didn't, for those of you that actually are looking to hook up a backup camera for the first time and you're making a purchase, this will hopefully give you some information on a couple different options on how to hook up your backup camera. I'm Alan with Sonic Electronics. We'll see you next time.